In this video, I will show you how to create these really cinematic 3D scenes that you can see in a lot of faceless channels. This one specifically is from Fern, but you also have Imperial, Hoog, Neo, and probably countless others that have these amazing 3D scenes in their video essays. Now, I actually did a full one hour deep dive on this, which you can see in the Social Creator Club Pro. You also get the project file of this video and all of my other videos. And of course, several deep dives on other styles. You can win some crazy prizes, you can get free clients, so do check that out again link is in the description and let's jump into it so i'm using blender for this and i'm first going to select everything here and i'm going to delete that by pressing x on my keyboard to delete so we have a clean space to work with now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add a mesh and then i go to cube so we have a simple cube i'm just going to make this a bit bigger so maybe five by five by five and the Z will also set to five. So it's perfectly flat with the ground. Now to orbit, I'm gonna use the middle mouse button. If you have a touchpad, you can also just scroll around. And if you hold shift and then the middle mouse button, you can also orbit around. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go change my object mode to edit mode. I'm gonna change this edit mode to faces. So I can just select these faces. And let's see, I'm gonna select these. Hold shift and then click to also select that and then press X to delete it. And I'm just gonna select faces, perfect. So we now have a basic scene, which we can use to build up our scene later on. Now to create the table, we can actually quite easily model something. We can or add a simple cube and model it from there or even cut it out from this model. But I actually have this model that I can just drag in, then press import. Now, if you wonder where to get these models, don't worry. Of course, if you are in the pro community, you will get this. But even in the free community, I post the assets so that you can at least follow along. Link is in the description. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is select these and then hit M, press new collection. And we're just gonna call this chair create. This will basically put it in a folder. I'm just gonna right click, select objects, and then I'm gonna go to skill. I'm gonna zoom out a bit and basically just move this. Now we need to scale it up. And as you can see, we need to scale it up by a lot. Maybe something like this. Let's make it so it's quite realistic. Then we're just gonna move it. Let's move it up. I'm gonna go into the rotate tool. Let's just rotate it around. And if you hold control, we'll basically snap into these axes, which is really nice. So we can just snap it like that and then go to move and let's move it to the back. There we go. Zoom in a bit. I'm just gonna see what this looks like. Looks really cool. I'm happy with this. If you want to see what it looks like, actually we can change the shading. So if you change this to viewport shading, you can actually see what this looks like. Now it's really dark because we don't have any lighting, but it can also be that the material is not loaded correctly. We can fix that later on. I'm just gonna insert other objects now. So I'm gonna change this back to my normal shading. And then we're gonna press M again new collection i'm gonna make this the table press create right click on the table select objects and again go into the scale tool we're gonna scale this up also maybe something like this let's move this up maybe it's a bit too big we can also adjust it a bit later on let's move this a bit actually maybe move this just in the into the ground because i do like to have it like this something like this yeah that will work cool now next one is the mcdonald's stuff so again, import, same thing, press M, new collection, McDonald's food, create, let's select this. And again, I'm gonna scale this up. Let's move this over. I think this is way too big now. Yeah, we just need to basically see a bit what this will look like. The anchor point of where we're scaling it from is not the best, but it should work. Going back to the move tool, we can move this around. Cool, let's move this. And then I'm gonna go to the rotate tool and I'm just gonna rotate it. And again, hold control. And on the right side, you can also see the degrees actually popping popping up. So I actually want to set it to minus 90 degrees, perfect. And I actually have to realign it now just to make sure that it's at the right spot. I like it like that, that's cool. And now of course, lastly, the person. Now there's multiple ways to do this. And I also know that a lot of these channels make everything custom and creating a custom won't fit in this tutorial. So I actually found a low poly model, which we can import again, press import. Now this model includes a lot of models actually, and we can actually go through it. You can pick anyone you like. The only downside is that these people are not sitting. Now you can add a bone structure or you could get the model with a bone structure and then basically making that low poly. For this specific animation, I don't mind that they're standing up. 
we can get away with that. So I'm just going to pick a person. I think this one is quite cool. Let's move that out. And I'm just going to select this person. Press M on your keyboard. New collection. And we'll just call this person create. Now this will put this one in a specific collection. That means that the others that are still here, we can just delete. So we can just go through this. Let's make this a bit bigger so you can really see it. We can just scroll all the way down, hold shift, click and delete it by pressing X. And there we go. Now do keep in mind, there's one thing left. And that's this one. This is actually an Easter egg of this 3D model. We can also delete that. Now let's select this one and let's move this. So go into your move tool if you're not already. And let's move this around a bit. And as you can see, this is a tiny man. So we need to scale this up, press S for scale or just click on scale. And we literally can just like scale it up. Maybe something like this, that's cool. And let's now move this. I'm gonna move it down a little bit backwards. And as you can see, it's already really coming together. Now we're already getting somewhere. And now the most fun part, in my opinion, is basically making sure that it all comes together. So we're gonna go to add camera and this will create a camera. Then we can change the object settings here. So first of all, I'm gonna move it up. I'm gonna set the X rotation to 90 degrees. I'm gonna set the Z rotation to zero and the Y rotation also to zero. And now we can actually go into this camera mode by pressing zero on your numpad or going to view, viewpoint, camera. So now we see through the camera. This means we can now move it backwards by changing the Y. So let's move it a bit more to the back, maybe a bit more, a bit higher. Let's zoom it out a bit. And we have our basic frame. I'm gonna go to add, light, spotlight. And for now, I'm just gonna go to view, viewpoint and press camera again it will basically toggle outside of the camera it's a bit easier to then change our lighting here so we can move this up and move this backwards and as you can see it won't change anything uh, that's because we need to change this to the viewport shading tab to see what it will look like now, as you can see it's still quite dark and that's because we need to change the settings of this light if you click on the data tab or like this light bulb, you see the power and we can literally just turn this up by a lot, basically making this really bright. Now this is already really cool, but I do want to change a couple of things. First, I want to change the beam angle. So it's basically a bit bigger. And also I want to increase the blend by a lot. So it's like a soft fall off. I'm also going to increase the radius by a bit. So the shadows are a bit softer. I'm just going to Put the light a bit higher maybe something like this and i'm gonna change the size and i'm gonna increase the power now the power depends a bit also on the size of your scene i already know that the size of this scene is actually quite big which is why the power also needs to be quite high but we're already getting somewhere as you can see now what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna copy and paste it by hitting command c command v or control C, control V on Windows. And then let's move this down a bit. And I'm gonna use this as a backlight on this wall. And to do this, we just simply need to change the rotation. In this case, that's the X rotation. So I set that to 90 degrees. As you can see, it will create this really cool spotlight, not how we want it specifically. So I'm just gonna move it down, move it more to the front, and I'm gonna go into the light and increase the beam shape by a lot. Let's move this down a bit, make sure it's behind the person again. Again, increase the size by a lot, and then maybe turning down the power a bit so it's a bit less heavy, something like this. Let's move this a bit, there we go. Now we're really getting somewhere. Now, as you might see, the materials are not great. This table, I think, in my opinion, should be pure white. And we can change the materials by just selecting a object. And then you can go to the material tab. As you can see, the base color is a bit off gray. I'm actually gonna make that pure white. And let's check out this couch because it's still black. Oh, there we go. We need to change the color of this. I'm gonna just turn this up and I'm gonna make it red. Now, lastly, I'm gonna go to add light and then area light and this is basically just a filler light i'm gonna move this up and this is almost gonna be like ceiling light so the size of one meter should be fine maybe increase it to two meters and then i'm gonna increase the power by a lot to just fill it in a bit not too much but as you can see this really will add something and it will even create this cool shadow again this just needs to be a bit to the top some somewhere like this and you're gonna move it a bit to the back perfect now let's go to view viewpoint camera 
so we can see our camera view. Now, I already really like our scene. It really looks cool, but I do think the drink is a bit too dark. We could add a light maybe on the side. Let's see if we just add a light, a point light, and just increase the Z to move it up. It's a bit hard to see, but let's see if we increase the light. I don't want it too much because then those cool shadows will be gone. So I'm just gonna increase it a bit. I'm gonna turn the shadows off so it won't create new shadows. I'm gonna go out of the camera view. Again, you can do that by going to view, viewpoint, and then just selecting active camera. It's a bit easier to change this a bit. So as you can see, this point light needs to be a bit more close to the foot. Let's move this up a bit. I also just don't want it to light up the whole scene. So I'm gonna decrease the power a bit. We could actually also use a spotlight for this, but I think this should work just to add a bit of light to this food. And this looks really, really cool. Now for the animation, we can just go to the camera and we can literally go to the object and set keyframes. So you can click on the animate property. Let's go a bit further, maybe to 100 and let's move it in and set another keyframe. Now, if you play this, it will automatically have a movement. It will also ease it down. Now, I don't want that. So I'm just gonna select my keyframes, right click, easing mode, interpolation mode, and then linear. And this will make these really smooth animations that you will also see in these video essays. Now we can literally just go to 101 and there's multiple ways to do this. You can also work with multiple scenes or multiple cameras. What we can do now is go to frame 100, set some keyframes here and go to frame 101. So it will basically look down, increase the Z by a lot and let's move the Y. So we're basically looking top down to this beautiful food. Let's zoom this in a bit. And then of course we can just keyframe the Z, actually keyframe everything. And then as you can see, it will just pop into place, which is just a simple zoom in. Let's set a keyframe again. Now keep in mind, these will also be east. So again, select them, right click, interpolation mode, linear. Now, of course you can also add some compositing. I will dive deeper into this in the pro community. But now to export this, you can just go to our output change the frame rate to 25 frames per second. Resolution is actually fine. You can also change this to 4K. I like working with PNG, so that's also fine. Put your output somewhere in a separate folder because trust me, it will basically export 170 PNGs. You don't want those on your desktop. Now you can also change the frame range, which we can set on 180 so we don't render too much. Then we can go to the render options, which is this camera. It's set on EV now. And EV is actually quite a quick way to export this. If you do use EV, I would also use ray tracing, which will add a bit of render time. It will also change a bit of the looks. You might also want to adjust the lighting after enabling this. Now here you can also see the samples, the higher, the better the quality, but also the slower the render. If you really want to get everything out of it, I would suggest to work with cycles, but cycles will definitely be slower on a lot of computers especially if you have high samples. So if I change this to 128, it will render a bit quicker and you can actually preview by hitting F12 and seeing how long it takes to render and also what your final image will look like. And then you get something like this. Again, do join the pro community if you want to learn more about this style, become a better editor, get help from all these pro editors, learn even more styles and even get free clients. Again, link is in the description. Do let me know if you want to see more of this or what you want to see next. Then of course, thanks for all the support, like always. <laughs> like you don't know how much it means to me. I will still reply to all the comments. Then thanks for watching and then I'll see you next time. Bye.